Then you talked a little bit about altcoins. Yeah. Um, I want to touch specifically on this concept of functionality. Yes. And maybe uh, alternative currencies like zero coin perhaps. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Thank you. So this is a pet topic of mine. I, I, I believe in this very strongly. Uh, there's a really important uh, discussion going on about anonymity and fungibility in the core protocol right now. And this is one we need to pay a lot of attention to. Uh, we made a serious mistake on the internet, which was the Tor wasn't built in from the beginning. And now we're paying for it and we have to re-engineer the internet because the NSA broke it. Um, but what we have the opportunity to do in Bitcoin is to implement anonymity at a core level in the protocol. And anonymity is not about money laundering for criminals. Anonymity is so that the Egyptian blogger who's trying to start a revolution and funds the sources he needs to make his voice heard isn't dragged out of his house, tortured and killed by an oppressive regime. Anonymity matters because anonymity is the basis for free association and expression. If you take away anonymity, you lose expression, you lose free association. You can be persecuted for who you know and what you said. Uh, anonymity gives people the ability to express themselves. It is not natural for a human being to have every thought they ever express cataloged forever. Forgetting is an important part of our psyche. And so, um, at the moment, there is this really important discussion going on as to how we solve the issue of anonymity within Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not anonymous. Uh, Bitcoin is a treasure trove of data analytics that you can mine forever. And eventually, you can just pull one thread that you can associate with an identity and unravel the entire set of transactions tied to that identity and track everything. Um, Bitcoin has within it the possibility to become uh, a totalitarian nightmare if we don't fix this problem. And there's another very important reason why we need to fix this, and it has nothing to do with anonymity in politics, and it has everything to do with with uh, currency. Uh, currency means flow. The word itself means flow. And one of the key characteristics of currency is the fungibility. Fungibility means that any single currency unit is indistinguishable and fully replaceable by another currency unit that's equivalent. So I have a dollar in my pocket. It's not this dollar that has a value of a dollar. It's any dollar like it. And in fact, under US law, I cannot make discrimination and say, well, I know that this serial number was touched by a Jew, was touched by a criminal. Well, you, know, you can't do horrible politics of exclusion or discrimination based on what the serial number is. This was resolved in Scotland in 1760-something, when uh, a merchant marked their uh, Scottish bank notes and then tracked them after they were stolen, found them in a bank, and then asked the bank to give him back his money. He said, this money was stolen from me. I have the serial numbers to prove it. Went to court, and the courts decided, no, you can't do that. Because if you do that, you break the very basis of currency, which is the trust that when I receive a note, it is unencumbered by prior obligation or prior taint. The note itself stands alone as a unit of currency, fully redeemable, without any association to a serial number or something like that, and it is fully equivalent to any other note. Bitcoin is not fungible. That's a problem. And uh, unless we make Bitcoin fungible, we may have a problem where things like coin validation or blacklisting or whitelisting will rob the basic fungibility of the currency. And if you do that, the currency breaks and no longer works. At the moment, they're trying to sell us the idea of whitelisting and blacklisting as an anti-theft mechanism. That is a lie. And it is a very dangerous lie. Um, Anti-theft mechanisms through coin validation or blacklisting of specific coins will not stop theft. What they will do is they will introduce random and arbitrary counterparties in the process. The people who create the blacklist, the organizations that create the blacklist. Worse, the moment they blacklist someone and that organization has put you on the blacklist, you sue that organization. So you just drag the entire legal system into a counterparty into that transaction. So now it's not between the sender and the recipient, it's between the sender, the recipient, the blacklist, and the judge as to whether you can redeem that transaction. And that's not a currency. That is not a currency. That is a possibly redeemable IOU that is heavily encumbered by third-party risk. And you broke Bitcoin. Worse, it won't work. 
because thieves will manage to remix their coins. And I can guarantee you that they will not blacklist the coins of thieves. HSBC starts money laundering, they get away with it. Their coins are not getting blacklisted. Greenpeace coins get blacklisted. WikiLeaks coins get blacklisted. The Egyptian blogger who's trying to start a revolution gets his coins blacklisted. But HSBC money launders to their heart's content because they own the legal system. If you reintroduce the legal system into Bitcoin, then it becomes as corrupted as the legal system, and it's all over. And the moment that's introduced into the core protocol, I'm selling all my Bitcoin and starting an altcoin. So we need to fix this. And part of that is technologies like CoinJoin and Dark Wallet that allow remixing. But in order to implement these rights, we need to make these tools not for the power user, but for the every user. We've learned this lesson with the NSA fiasco. What we learned was that they were able to subvert things like PGP because they can narrowly target the people who use them because not everyone uses them. Right? But they were not able to effectively subvert SSL because it's so broadly distributed that because it's used by everyone every time they use a browser, whether they like it or not, whether they know it or not, it's not a user choice. SSL happens. And if you try to turn it off, you can't visit that website anymore. That ubiquitous deployment of common encryption standards was the most effective encryption tool we've ever had in the world. SSL was the most widely deployed cryptographic standard. And it worked, because we know that the NSA had a very hard time doing some very narrow and selective compromises of very specific SSL keys. It forces them to narrow their mission to targeted. And targeted is okay, it's part of their mission. It means warrants, it means due process. Ubiquitous is the problem. So if we think about anonymity, the most important thing in anonymity within Bitcoin is what does the everyday user do? My vision is every wallet does full cryptographic coin join on every transaction every time, whether you know it or not. It becomes invisible as part of the protocol. We move a layer above, we no longer see addresses, we no longer see the transaction content, it just gets remixed. And when you're not doing transactions, it's remixing your own wallet and sending stuff between the various addresses you own and recycling them constantly. So that every coin is tainted with every coin. That gives us transaction layer fungibility in the core of the protocol. And to me, that is the most important thing we need to fix with Bitcoin before it goes mainstream. All of the rest can be done in meta layers. But if we don't have a fungible transaction layer, everything else above it is compromised. So uh, yes, thank you for asking me that. Great question. Yes.